Hey folks, Bill Sundstrom here from Santa Clara University. A uh, quick uh, video on how to visualize regression coefficients in R using a couple of cool tools uh, in R, mApply and the familiar ggplot. Um, so what I want to do is go through a quick motivation by way of an example, give you an idea of the kind of uh, visualization I have in mind, and then we're going to uh, run some alternative specifications that we want to visualize using ggplot with this nice uh, looping uh, facility in R called mApply, which is confusing at first, but once you learn what it does, it's pretty straightforward. And finally, we're going to clean up and plot the results. So let's take a quick look at uh, the motivation for this. Uh, we run a lot of regressions in economics and other fields, and uh, very often we're interested in comparing regression coefficients across a variety of potential alternative specifications, or for different subsamples, or for different uh, factor variables. And uh, that's very common to do. We can present all the results in a table, but uh, oftentimes it's nice to have some visualization to uh, help compare things. So my example is I'm going to uh, do a very common type of regression in labor economics and other fields called an earnings equation. And it's an ordinary least squares regression. And we're gonna compare earnings differentials across different social categories, for example, ethnicity or marital status adjusting earnings for education and age by controlling for those in the regression. So here's uh, the setup using um, a simple uh, regression equation. We're going to use the log of earnings as the dependent variable and uh, that gives us a nice interpretation of the coefficients. We then uh, regress that on uh, a measure of education, a measure of age, and then in this case our variables of interest which is going to be essentially a factor variable with different values for ethnicity. So it might be uh, white non-Hispanics, African Americans, Asian Americans could be the different groupings. And we're gonna take a look at those gamma coefficients on the ethnicity variables, dummies. And uh, keep in mind that anytime we run a regression with factor variables, the estimated effects are always relative to some omitted reference category. And in my case, I'm gonna set that up so that that's um, white non-Hispanic. So we'll be looking at earnings of other ethnic groups relative to white non-Hispanics adjusting for education and age of the individual. And we're gonna retrieve those coefficients and visualize them. And we might do that for other types of uh, factor variables, uh, for example, marital status. So here's an illustration. This is the kind of thing that I have in mind that we're going to try to take a look at. And I've got a whole bunch of comparisons going on here and we can unpack this picture a little bit later. But basically, each point represents the point estimate of the effect relative to the reference category. And then we put some little uh, confidence intervals, basically two standard errors around these uh, as the little whiskers there. So you can see in the upper left hand box, we have the sample of female workers in this case, and the different uh, ethnicity effects or coefficients relative to ethnicity uh, zero equals white. So this is the reference category. I've made note of that over to the far right there. And so we can see, for example, that uh, African-American women uh, adjusting for age and education get paid a little bit less, uh, although it's uh, the confidence interval overlaps just a little bit with uh, zero there. So it's a little bit uh, maybe something like negative 0.7 or so on our picture, 0.07, and that would be about a 7%. Uh, gap. So how are we going to take this to R? And what I'm going to do is com combine this nice way of looping through the different regression specifications uh, using mApply and then uh, plot it in uh, ggplot. So let's uh, turn to, to a quick look at the script in R and see how this is going to work and then we'll come back and dig into some of the details. Here's my R script. I'm going to make this available through a link on the YouTube site. Uh, and let me just scroll through and take a look at a couple of the features of this script. Usually we have some preliminary stuff. We need to load a few packages. Make sure you have uh, installed these if you haven't uh, already, because these will come in handy for some of the things we do in this script. And I'm going to change the working directory, which I usually do to make sure that uh, R can find everything. Uh, here's the data. I'm not going to say much about that. 
You shouldn't read too much into these results. This is a, a random sample of the American Community Survey, publicly available individual level data for 2013. And uh, I'm just looking at uh, people in the age category of 25 to 54. This is sort of prime age workers. I create some new variables, including the log of the income variable, the earnings variable that's in the data set uh, to make that the dependent variable. And uh, just to give you an idea what this kind of regression looks like, if I run this little chunk, you can do that for yourself. You can see that we've got the regression output from, in this case, a straightforward regression of log of earnings on education and age. And this is years of education completed. And you can see here are the coefficients. In particular, the coefficient on years of education is about 0 0.126, 1127. And that is to say that uh, predicted log earnings go up by about uh, 0.13 for every additional year of education completed. And that's about uh, what we would call a 13% rate of return on education, a year of education. I'm not gonna run this yet, but the turning to the sort of meat of the uh, program here, we've got this function that I'm going to implement that allows us to kind of loop through different specifications. And in particular, I'm gonna loop through the uh, subsample by gender, and I'm gonna loop through what is the regressor of interest. And I'm gonna look at two different sets of regressors by way of a factor variable. One of those will be ethnicity and the other marital status. And then this function is going to be what gets called up by M apply. It's going to loop through different specifications that are determined by these two parameters, F and X. Again, the sample by gender and the um, factor variable of interest. Here's where we set up those uh, vectors of the different parameters that are going to fit, get fed into the function. And I'm going to talk about how M apply works in a second. We run M apply here, and then we need to process the results of M apply which come out as a kind of a list of results. We're gonna put that into a data frame that we can then run uh, through ggplot to plot the effects and get the, exactly that plot that I showed you before. So that's where we're headed with this and we will uh, come back uh, in just a minute and run through this thing after I unpack a couple of the details about M apply. So turning back to the PowerPoint here, I wanna take a look at how we use mApply to run these uh, different specifications. What does it do? Basically, mApply is gonna iterate a function, in my case, that function that ran the regressions, through a, what I'm gonna call a parallel list of inputs. And that seems obscure, but it's pretty easy to understand by way of our example. So here I have the, the chunk of code that uh, I was showing you before with the function, and uh, here are the parameter vectors down here. Now if I take a look at what's going on, you'll notice that um, the function again is of f and x. These are our parameters of the function that get fed in. The f appears here where we specify the gender of the subsample that we're going to run the regression on. And then the X, which is the factor variable, appears here. And I'm not gonna go through all this, but if you've done this before, you know you can create a formula by pasting together various terms that can be estimated using LM, the regression formula. And you'll notice here that I've made this so that the dependent variable is always the log of earnings, and it's always controlling for education years and age. And then additionally, I put into the formula the uh, factor variable of interest, which is either ethnicity or marital status. And then uh, we're going to pull out of the regression results the coefficient estimates that we need, and that's gonna be using making use of this uh, tidy regression, which is in the broom package, it's part of the tidyverse. All right, now how does this uh, M apply work? You'll notice M apply is down here, is going to be the arguments in it are the, first of all, the function that we're gonna run, which is COEF, then the vectors of the parameters that are gonna get fed into COEF, uh, namely the Fs and the Xs here. And then we have this little uh, condition here, simplify equals false, and that's important in making sure we get all the results we need uh, out of the process. 
So what happens is when we implement M apply, what it's going to do is it's going to look at this first vector of parameters. And it takes the first element, which is female, and it's going to feed it in up here to the uh, function. And it's going to take the first element here, and it's going to feed that in for x. Right? So because of the way I've set this up, it's going to take the first and the first. And then it's going to loop through, run everything, and then it's going to take the second and the second element of each of these parameter vectors and feed them into the function. So you need to make sure you've set up your parameter vectors so that uh, they are running in the order that you want them to. In my case, I'm going to run regressions, two regressions that uh, include the ethnicity variable, one on the female subsample, this next on the male subsample, and then I'm going to do the same thing over again, substituting in place of ethnicity, marital status, uh, factor variable, and again for the female subsample and the male subsample sequentially. And that's how that thing is going to work. Now I'm going to take a look back at this and run it through R and show you how the first iteration works and process that loop. So uh, let's take a, take a look back at the script and run this through and see what happens. Now in my script, I've included the first iteration without running it through M apply. This is down uh, below the meat of the thing, just to give you an idea how this works. So you'll notice here I have uh, just set it up. So F is female, X is ethnicity. So that was that's the first elements of my parameter vectors here, which are gonna get, the, so that'll be the first thing that M apply does. And let me just run this uh, to give you an idea what those coefficients look like when we run this through. So I've run this, I've pasted together the formula, I've run the regression, and now I've pulled out the coefficients using the tidy. And that's in this little data frame called COEF. And there you have it. And you'll notice that the uh, rows all correspond to regression, um, uh, the regressors, the intercept term, the education age, and then the factor variable broken down into the different groups. And again, I've set it up so that uh, the uh, reference category or omitted category is white non-Hispanics. And then we have the estimates, standard errors, and some other stuff. The standard errors here are not corrected for heteroscedasticity. The script at the end has a little code to show you how to do that. Uh, if you want to get uh, heteroscedastic robust standard errors, it's not that hard to put that in here, but it clutters the code a little bit. All right, so now that I've done that, let's actually run through this, set up the function, set up the parameter vectors, implement uh, M apply, and then we're going to get the results out. Now, the key thing here is that when I run M apply, I end up with the results being in a list. You could look at that list and see for yourself that it's not very easy to interpret. So we do this do call here, which is basically going to take the list and bind together the different specifications. Um, so it takes QQ as an input and it runs this function uh, row bind on the uh, contents of this list. And then I'm going to take that and uh, do some manipulations. And I'm not going to go through the details here, but you can see what happens if you run it through and take a look. And uh, the result that I got was this thing called effects, which is now a transformed uh, data frame. And it's got these terms. The terms are, I've uh, relabeled the factor variables here so that they have a nice, they'll appear nicely on the picture and uh, a little bit more information in there. And here's the estimate and the standard error, which I'm, which I'm gonna be using to uh, put together my ggplot. So that's what we're ending up with, and this is gonna get fed into ggplot, and let me show you that uh, quickly in just a sec. So reaching the end of our agenda here, I'm, I've run the regression specifications, looped through using mapply, that's a super flexible way of running alternative specifications, and you can play around with it and see you can do lots of different things, different data sets, different dependent variables. I could have substituted in uh, earnings for log earnings in some of my runs, and uh, you'll quickly figure out how to do all of that. 
The last thing we're going to do is take that output and clean it up a little bit and plot the results. And I've already done most of the cleaning. I've got pretty much everything I need, and I just need to feed it into ggplot. And we're going to take use, uh, make use of a couple of really nice ggplot tools you may already be familiar with. The thing that gives us those points with the whiskers for the confidence intervals is geom point range. Uh, very easy to use. And then putting the four diagrams into that nice two by two grid is taking advantage of facet grid. And much of the time, a lot of the uh, work that you're going to have to do is just tinkering with the scales and the labels to get it to look really nice. So let's go back to the R code and finish this up. So here I am back in the R code, and I'm just going to run this uh, ggplot command here. You'll notice that uh, we set up the aesthetic. The x here is going to be term. Term is uh, in that data frame, if we take a look at that again. Term is the value of the relevant factor variable, whether it's Asian, Black, or Hispanic. Or in the case of marital status, I have marital married with spouse absent, married with spouse present, et cetera. Right? So those were all. Uh, values of the factor variable. Then I'm going to add the GM point range and GM point range is very easy. We give it a, a central point, which is what are those little uh, dots are going to be. And then uh, we are going to uh, make the minimum of the whisker minus two standard errors and the maximum of the whisker is going to be plus two standard errors. I'm going to do a coordinate flip, which puts the terms that is the values of the factor variable on the vertical axis, which makes the graph a lot easier to read because there's some, that's uh, written words that come out better if they're on the vertical axis. And I'm gonna stick a red line for the zero because everything we're thinking about, whether the effects are significant uh, relative to the uh, reference category, which is essentially zero here. Facet grid. We're going to uh, give the columns uh, to the gender, which recall is the subsample, male or female. The rows are going to be uh, variables uh, regressor. Um, and that is which factor variable sets we're using, ethnicity or marital status, and some other stuff you can kind of go through. So I'm just going to run this. And with any luck, we get the plot. And so that's uh, essentially the plot that's reproduced in my presentation. So that's uh, all I want to talk about right now. You've got uh, how to do all this stuff. You can run through the code yourself. I'll put up the data set as well. And hopefully, uh, as you go along, you'll figure out lots of nice ways to implement this to visualize your regression results. There may be packages that do this for you in a variety of ways. But uh, this mApply is a really nice tool to learn about and uh, gives you a ton of flexibility for how to take advantage of ggplot to visualize regression results. All right, take care for now, and uh, we'll see you around.